in our final 10 minutes, I actually want to zoom so far out, get, get out of crypto, just talk about you, life advice, success. But before all that, final thoughts on cryptocurrency, your strategy into next year. Uh, my strategy is I did most of my buying last year. I never sold a single thing. Um, the idea was the journey I've learned since 2012, 13 was if your thesis is long term, stay with that. But then in these, if you think of that, that logarithmic trend is when we get these down cycles, the macro down cycle or the, the halving cycle, that's when you add and it compounds over time. So that's all I've done. Now, um, you know, when I've got more cash, I'll probably still add a bit more, but that's the that's my main thesis. And I'm just sticking with that, just keeping it super zoomed out. As you said, keep the emotions out of it, ignore 90% of the news, observe it, but don't feel part of it. That's a really big thing to learn. All the, is Binance gonna go bust, is that gonna, none of it matters. It just, it's just, all that does is change the path of that you know does it go down and then up and then down i don't know but what's the probability that the space is significantly higher in 10 years knowing what we know knowing that the financial system wants to use it and all the brands that want to use it and that the that the central banks want to issue central bank digital currencies and stable coins are being adopted around the world the probability of this being much higher is extremely high just focus And by the way, both Starbucks and Ticketmaster, I believe, we don't, we're not asking what blockchain they're on, but I think they're both on Polygon, um, yeah. which is obviously a uh, you know works uh, with Ethereum, all part of the broader Ethereum ecosystem. Looking into 2024, what's a prediction or an outlook you have for no ETH? I don't know. I don't. I'm so scarred from trying to give outlooks, and then you know it becomes this this obsession that people want to beat you with so look i'm very positive obviously i think we go well through new all-time highs um you know i think the whole ecosystem of crypto we go from 425 million users where we are today i think the end of this cycle will be a billion users by the kind of use cases we've talked about don't forget we've got cbdc stable coins there's a lot going on still so you know if the entire space is going to grow two and a half x in in number of users well market cap of the entire space is five or ten x so you know you can figure it out from where that is so yeah look i'm, I'm just very positive um and then let's see how people value layer twos in this you know we don't really know how value twos accrue as much value do we have to have a massive amount of transactions in which case then you need stuff like Ticketmaster with millions and millions and millions of transactions to drive value to those chains because they batch them and then batch them down to ETH. So look, I, it's it's super fascinating, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't see anything different this cycle than we've sort of seen in other cycles for any particular reason. What's your view on Coinbase's base? Speaking of L2s, have you bridged to it? Are you on friend tech? Any of that excite you? No, I'm just not the guy who's going to do that stuff. I get it and observe it, but you know, I'm just, you know, when you're going down such small use cases, when you start to tell a normal person, well, you need to set up a MetaMask to get ETH and then bridge it into um, into base. And then you can do, I'm just like, people are like, Inaudia. you're talking to 20 people in the room at that point of a room of 10 million people. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Now, the Coinbase people know that. They're not stupid either. They're letting the community figure it out, test it, Inaudia. test out an application layer like... Uh, friends, other stuff. So it's good. Um, I think it's a net positive for the space. I think, I think Coinbase is just a really good organizer. In audio. What are your thoughts on the Bitcoin halving of 2024? Is it priced in? Is it still a huge deal? So I think the Bitcoin halving is actually to do with the macro cycle. Um, it's in the audio. debt refi cycle that happened in 2008. In 2008, we had a great reset of debt. What happened is every central bank, major central bank around the world said, right, nobody needs to pay interest. Interest rates are zero. Okay, that was fascinating. Then they kind of agreed that nobody was gonna pay off debts. So they just keep rolling them. And what they did is back in 2008, they all issued debt between three and five years. That kind of four year midpoint is the halving cycle because 
Bitcoin launched at the same time, so they're coincidental. Now, maybe it's one of the reasons Bitcoin you know, can outperform because of it, but really the cycle is a macro cycle, which is really important for people to understand. But you can still use the Bitcoin halving cycle because it's the same timing, so it makes no difference. You don't have to over-intellectualize it. It's just like, yeah, generally 2024 should be an up year unless something dramatically has changed. And like you mentioned oh, yeah. earlier uh, in this conversation, presidential election in the US is happening. It seems for the first time in history, Bitcoin, crypto is going to be a hot button issue. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're seeing a lot of the non-core candidates lean into this audience. Now, you've got to be cynical. They're just buying your votes, right? They're telling you what you want to hear because they want to get your votes. But we're seeing it on the left and the right that there's a leaning into crypto to capture that voter audience who are single issue voters. Um, it's a good thing. Net net, we know the political tide is turning. Oh, yeah. So we had the massive pushback and then the tide is going back again as the system pushes against it. So, you know, I'm very encouraged by that. It was very frustrating to see the US operate in the way that it did oh, yeah. versus other countries uh, who've done a much better job of this. But it feels that maybe the political system will force them uh, to change. And, you know, just stuff like the Black Rock ETF and what happens with the e ETF, stuff like that. These are net positives, particularly for 2024. We saw so much good news in crypto probably a month, six weeks ago, all in the same, uh, around the same time. Uh, Ripple winning against the SEC in most part, uh, BlackRock filing for that uh, spot Bitcoin ETF application. So to me, it, it made sense why we dipped a little after that. It was sort of euphoria, so much coverage in the news. Um, BlackRock or insiders, if they bought any, probably bought six months before that. Do you think just like this cool off from that euphoric little local peak, was that just a natural market cycle or was that any like insider selling into the news? I don't think it's insider selling into the news. I think, again, if we look at all of those, uh, the Ripple case or the launch of the ETFs or the ETH futures no. ETF, none of those have been launched. So there's no actual new money coming in. So if you think of it as an economy, we're just still messing around with the same money in the economy. And a lot of those assets have gone down, no, like NFTs, yeah. stuff like that. So we're still waiting for more investment to come in. So what we've done is sowed the seeds for the new investment, but the space hasn't got much capital to put in. You know, everyone's kind of fully invested in the space. You know, we kind of know the story. Yes, a bunch of people have stable coins and are sitting on cash. But but generally speaking, we need new investors. And none of that's happened yet. So then if we step back and say, well, who's the seller? And we know that the government have been selling the Mt. Gox yeah. stuff. We know that the FTX stuff has to come onto market. So really, it's a supply issue right now. Not, It's a promise of future demand, but we haven't got it. So the market has to deal with